Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Coordinator Teaching Learning Center, Kerr College of Engineering, Trichy. This is lecture number three in the lecture series. The topic is understanding the learners. So, who is the learner today in colleges? The learners they are digital age or information age learners. So, there are some personality traits for the digital age or information age learners. Lot of research has been done on this learner group and education psychologists have identified the following personality traits of the digital age or information age learners. They have close affinity with the technology. They have very short attention span. So, technology, they are, they are born with technology. So, they have mobile phone always in their hand as the sixth finger. They have very short attention span, not more than 15 minutes, sometimes not more than 5 minutes. They are used to a lot of attention from the parent and the family. So, many of the students, they are single child. So, they have more attention from their parent and the family members. They work best in a relaxed environment. So, stick, strict environment will not be suitable for this type of students. They expect rational explanation for any action. So, for anything, any action is taken or any action they do, they want some explanation. If you want to, if you, if you expect them to do some action, they want the clear explanation. They are very impatient and want fast results. So they want instant gratification. So, immediately they want to see the result. They are not bothered about the gestation period. They do not wait. They do not have the patience. They enjoy social interaction. They enjoy researching information. So, the when you give a topic, immediately they will go to the Google and search for the information. So, they enjoy autonomy. So, they they want to act independently. That is what autonomous. So, what is the learning style of the students in general? So, the students learn in many ways by seeing and hearing, reflecting and acting, reasoning logically and intuitively, memorizing and visualizing and drawing analogy and building mathematical model, steadily and in fit and starts. So, seeing, hearing, reflecting. Reflecting means understanding and writing on their own way. Reasoning logically and intuitively. So, from the mind, it, immediately sometimes it will spark. That is intuition. So, memorizing or visualizing. So, they will, sometimes the student, steadily they are learning or in fit and starts. Occasionally, only during the examination time. Teaching method also vary. So, there are different methodology of teaching by the teachers. Some instructor lecture, others demonstrate or discuss, some focus on the principle and other on the application, some emphasis on the memory, others on the understanding. So, these are all different methodology of lecturing, of teaching by the teachers. How much a student learn in the classroom depends on the student's learning style and teachers teaching style. So, how the, the if, when there is a mismatch between the learning style and the teaching style of the teacher, so nothing will happen inside the classroom. So, there should be perfect match between the student's learning style and the teacher's teaching style. So, what are the teaching style? The Richard Felder and the Silverman, they, they developed a model for learning style and they have four components, input, perception, processing and understanding. What is the input? Input of information, how they perceive the information, how the students perceive the information and how do they process the information cognitively in their mind and uh, what way they are understanding the concept or the theory. That is what the four different components. In each component, there are two categories. Input, it may be visual input or verbal input. So, visual may be in the form of PPT, or video lecture or verbal reading some content 
so in the form of literature or textbook or notes perception so how they perceive the information effectively using the sensing element so we know that we are learning through our sensors sense i mean sensing elements there are five sense organs so we are learning from the sensing intuition so intuition means it is sparking in the mind sometimes it may happen to some of the students so how do they process the information actively by doing something so they do active they, they, they will be active learner they will when you give some exercise they may immediately do it and understand and process the information so reflective they will think about it so when you when you say something they will say take some time and think about it and process the information so how do they understand or how effectively they understand when you present the information in a sequential way step by step method they can understand easily or when the when you when the information is not present is a step by step way and they will understand globally so overall picture when you give the overall picture about the subject so they can understand that is what global understanding sequential understanding the sensing type of learner sensors do not like a course that have no apparent connection to the real world so they want subject which will have real time connection so in the lecturing we have to add real time application of any subject any topic so that they can understand better intuitive learners like innovation and dislike repetition so they want innovative thinking innovative idea inside the classroom innovatively you have to teach inside the classroom and they like dislike repetition visual learners remember best what they see in terms of pictures diagram flow charts timeline film and demonstration verbal learners they get more out of words written or the spoken explanation so active learners active learners tend to retain and understand information best by doing something active with it so they are good problem solver active learners they are good problem solver and they will be good at doing some experiment or research reflective learners are they prefer to think about it quietly sequential learners the sequential learners tend to gain understanding in linear steps with each step following logically from the previous one so there should be connection from the between the steps and it should go in a step by step procedure global learners may be able to solve complex problem quickly but they have they may have difficulty explaining how they did it so they are they they can they can they can think over on similarly they can solve these are all the different types of learning styles of the students so how to assess the learning style of the student before we deliver a subject so there is one tool index of learning style questionnaire developed by the professor richard felder and barbara solomon so north carolina state university the link for the tool is given uh, you can you can use the link or you can just type index of learning style questionnaire in the google you will get the link so use the link first you do it you there are some 40 questions in the uh, questionnaire you answer to the question understand your learning style first then uh, circulate the share the link to the students before you begin teach begin to teach the subject so ask them to prepare ask them to answer all the 40 questions and at the end when they submit so there will be a image there will be a result there will be result and result will be displayed in this form so i have shown here some three results of three different students so the active reflect this is one axis of learning sensing intuitive it is another axis of learning visual verbal third axis sequential global these are all the different axis of learning and uh, if you look at here he is more visual so he is more intuitive he is more active so these are all the results i have consolidated the results for the uh, secondary mechanical engineering uh, for whom i am presently teaching the subject engineering thermodynamics so the learning style of the secondary mechanical engineering in the year 2023-24 and the complete analysis is presented here so visual 76 percent students are visual 24 students 24 percent of students they are verbal they can understand verbal information so in the in terms of perception perceiving the information using the sensing they are only 29 percent but intuitively they can they can 
perceive the information 71 percentage. Then active learners, they are only 41 percentage, whereas reflective learners, they are 59 percentage. Sequential, when you present the information sequentially, step by step, the 71 percent students, they can understand. So, the global overall picture, it is very difficult for them, 29, only 29 percent. So, if you look at the diagram, the visual, intuitive and the sequential, these are all the advantages of the this group of learners and they are very poor in verbal understanding, sensing type of learning and active type of learning, global type of learning. So, what to do with the data? So, we have to, we have to change our teaching methodology a little bit so that it will benefit the students. So, based on the images, based on the observation, the student understand better the visual input and the step by step method. So, visual input 76 percent, step by step 71 percent. So, we have to present the content in a step by step manner visually. So, wherever possible, we have to use the diagram or chart some images so that the students can easily understand. Help them to understand verbal information because it is 24 percent. So, give practice on reading and writing in the classroom so that they can they can understand more, uh, read more and write more so that verbal information they can easily understand. Perception by seeing and hearing need to be improved. So, sensing, seeing and hearing to be improved. So, cut down classroom distraction and make them to focus on the class. This we have to do in the classroom. Make them to work actively in the class for better processing of information. So, active learning is very poor. We have to give more active exercises uh, in terms of problem solving or even in terms of activity. We have to teach them so that they can process the information in a better way. The overall picture of the content. The and its usage as are, are to be improved. So, give connection to the real world. So, you, you, when you give connection to the real world for any concept, so how it is being used in the real time world, real time application, if you connect with that, they can learn or understand better the better the information. So, with this, I conclude the ultimate truth is it is impossible to redesign students to fit into the system. Already, we have a system for teaching. So, it is very difficult to redesign the student to fit into the system, but we can redesign the system for the present day students. So, we have to necessarily adjust our teaching methodology so that we can help the present day students effectively, effectively and they will learn better in the classroom situation. So, thank you for your listening. If you have any queries, you can contact me through my mail ID or WhatsApp number. I will answer to your questions. We will meet again in another lecture. Until then, bye.